say a prayer for me. <laughs> it's Friday at 7-Eleven and I just went to mobile order the Starbucks for Taylor and myself because it's my week to pick it up. And according to the app, they are just out of iced coffee altogether, out of cold brew altogether at the one that I normally go to and at two others in this general area. So I'm going to hope that that's just an error with the app because we know the app is tripping sometimes. Um, but if they don't have it, I really don't have a backup plan because I didn't make any iced coffee last night, so I don't have that. And a beverage, a coffee in the morning when I work is like a security blanket. It, it gets me through the day. It gets my day going. It gives me something to do. I just feel like I need it psychologically. So just cross your fingers that they actually do have something that I can drink. Um, in other news, I'm wearing my Nike outfit today because it's Nike day. And I'm just really glad I bought this little set because I'm already extremely comfortable. The set itself is comfortable. The shoes are comfortable. It's great. I'm loving it. So I don't know if they still have it, but I suggest you get it because I'm loving myself for wearing this right now. So stay tuned for the coffee drama. Well, good news. I got my drink. So the issue is, is they have these items. They're just very low in stock, so they're not offering it on the app. Let's do a taste test. That one's good. Um, which in some ways is not great because now that means people cannot mobile order and they might be going in instead like I did, making the lines long. And that Starbucks, I, I just tell you, every Friday, <laughs> I feel sorry for the baristas because it's just busy on Fridays because, you know, people are getting a Friday treat like Taylor and I do. And they are working and some people are just in there and they just don't have the patience either because they aren't making use of things like the mobile app or they aren't recognizing that Friday is always like going to be a busy day. So one guy was in there just giving them a hard time telling them no one's even working the bar when clearly they are all doing something. So I just, I just try and plan ahead and I couldn't mobile word this time, but I just went in and knew gonna take a minute and somehow my drink came out before someone else's that had been there before me I don't know how that happened but I wasn't really gonna argue about that so anyway I got the coffee I'm gonna get to school and um, I'm gonna either you know show you guys what I've been telling you I'm gonna show you before school starts or I'm gonna show it to you during my prep it's gonna happen today but I'm also going to warn you that I don't know how much checking in I'll be able to do because I'll be teaching most of the day and then I have to leave right after school because I have a very important appointment to get to which is my manicure so um, I might be oh my god Leah this manicure needs to happen like yesterday I'm, I'm gonna be bopping out real quick so you'll see me you'll see me soon <gasps> See you guys later. <laughs> okay, I'm on my prep period. It's 8.38 and I have a moment to check in and show you the things that I've been meaning to show you for the past couple of days. So again, I teach eighth grade US history that really starts like post-revolutionary war. war. Um, and the goal for me is to get to reconstruction. I have yet to accomplish that in the three, two, this is my third year of teaching middle school. And so last year just doesn't count because it was just not the normal year. My first year, I didn't know what I was doing really. So it was just kind of like, let's see what happens. So hopefully this is the year. So um, our textbook spends a, a chunk of time talking about the European explorers and um, the battles of the Revolutionary War and all of that. And I just don't feel like that's super necessary for me to do because I know from teaching fifth that that is a big part at the fifth grade curriculum but at the same time I need to remind them of those things so that 
they know where we're picking up when we start talking about, you know, the Declaration of Independence and the drafting of the Constitution. So I don't use the textbook at all um, for that, and I really don't use our textbook very much in general. So we do talk about, um, like we did the thing on the Boston Massacre, and I use that to kind of talk about the idea that, you know, once the colonies were established, the Middle, Southern, and New England colonies, they were really all operating as their own separate entities, and then there came a point where Britain was taxing them heavily to pay for the French and Indian War and they were outraged like generally speaking and that started to unify these colonies uh, to kind of band together and just talking about the fact that they were taxed and taxed and taxed and taxed and taxed and it just came to a head to the point where um, you know Thomas Paine writes common sense and starts talking about we don't even need Britain we should really just declare independence from them and then more and more people catch on to that idea and start to agree with that and then the Revolutionary War comes from that so I show them this video that is called the Revolutionary War or the American Revolution oversimplified and it's in two parts I think I've said before I only show them part one because if I remember correctly part two spends a lot of time like talking about the actual battles and I just that's not critical for me um, I do I the kids this year really enjoyed this video like they found it humorous because it is funny and so they wanted to see part two and I said I doubt that I, I show you part two because we're always so pressed for time but I told them I would give them the link to part two if they wanted it and I haven't because I forgot and no one's asked but um, I may post it at some point uh, but I do always let parents know before I show the video that I'm showing it and I give them the link to the video so they can watch it and I let them know like they either allude to um, inappropriate language like bad words or um, they partially will say it like I can't explain it they don't actually say the words but they allude to it like to the point where you know what word they're gonna say um, and so I've yet to have a parent in the three years I tell them that and I say if you don't want your child to watch this let me know and I will give them an alternative assignment and I've yet to have one parent I'm just trying to really think I've not had one parent say I don't want my child to watch the video um, and this may be something a teacher's not supposed to say but I think we're just at a point where with music and social media and TV shows and movies like this is not language kids are not hearing they're not that sheltered anymore so most parents really are just kind of like look like I don't have an issue with it <clears throat> this is not anything my kids haven't heard before um, but I always do that just in case so I give that ahead of time and it's about it's 15 minutes long there is like a commercial in the very beginning um, that I always just fast forward to I think it's a commercial for like a video game or something but it really is funny to teens and adults so it looks like this and I will see if I can just play like the briefest clip so you can kind of get a feel of it Holy smokes, Christopher Columbus, that is no way to address the king and queen of Spain. What is wrong with you? Okay, okay, so you know how we're looking for a new trade route to India, right? Right. And the earth is round, right? Right. So I'm thinking we can just sail the other way around the planet, right? Yeah. So I set sail, right? Mm -hmm. And I reach India, right? Right. Wrong. Wrong. I did not reach India. I did not. All right, no. all right, get to the point. Did you know there's a whole nother freaking continent out there? Okay, and you think I should care about this? Why? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I forget to mention there's gold everywhere? Gold? <laughs> so, that is how the video opens, and usually from that point on, kids are kind of engaged by it. So I show them that, um, and that's what we did there. And then after I showed them this, we read the first two cha chapters of Stamp which I highly recommend if you teach U.S. history. Um, we read the first two chapters of Stamped because what I found last year is if we're not actively talking about slavery, the kids forget that in the midst of all this stuff happening, like the Revolutionary War and all this stuff, there is still the issue of slavery off on the side, and so they kind of forget that. Um, so I need to do a better job of, like, when we're talking about, like, this saying but also don't forget simultaneously we're having th slavery is starting to pick up in like use and popularity so we watched that video and then the next day we read the first two chapters of stamped the first chapter is titled america's let me make sure i get it right 
no, not America's, the story of the world's first racist. And that chapter really talks about how it came to the point where African slavery was justified. What were the things that people did during this time to start justifying the use of Africans as slaves and make it seem like it wasn't necessarily a bad thing and that maybe it was benevolent and that maybe it was a good thing and that maybe we're saving the souls of these Africans. Um, so it talks about that in that chapter. And the second part, second not power the second chapter is titled puritan power where he talks about the puritans and like how they um used religion to kind of justify slavery and say you know we're saving the slaves we're saving their souls um they were using religion to kind of justify what was going on and it just kind of differentiates between there were some people that just viewed slaves as like money makers couldn't care less about their souls that wasn't really an issue but that was in direct conflict with people that were like we need to save the souls of the slaves so we read those two chapters and when um we read it not yesterday but the day before i just had them take out all their hi highlighters and say you know again you're in the eighth grade and you should be actively reading meaning like you're responding and reacting to all the things that you're hearing and the things that you're thinking as you're hearing them and then i just showed them my book to say like as i read this like there were so many things i highlighted and tabbed because there's just so much information some that i knew some that i didn't know some that sparked questions for me so just trying to use myself as a model for that so we have good discussion in both classes um, based on those two chapters and um, that's kind of where we paused. I didn't do history yesterday because we're trying to wrap up this whole group writing with uh, the monkey's paw but the next thing that I'm going to do, I might show this video today but if not today tomorrow, we're going to look a little closer at the Puritans. We're going to watch a video by Mr. Heimler who is a um, AP history teacher in Georgia I believe that makes videos that I always like so he has a quick video on the Puritans and then there's a um, Stanford history education group lesson on the Puritans and like the essential question is um, what is it let me look at planbook.com because I have it linked oops Um, the focus question of that lesson is, were the Puritans selfish or selfless? So that will be the next thing that we do with history. And then as far as language arts, you guys saw a little bit of that yesterday. Um, and so we're writing together. Like my goal is to teach them what they should be doing as they respond to these first three questions, how they should prepare, how they should ensure that they get a, you know, a good grade. And um, it's taken a while. It's taken me much longer than what I thought, but this is what we needed to do. So let me put you guys down for a second. All right, so what we've been doing is we've tapped the prompt. That was the first thing we did. Then we um, collected text evidence that we thought we could use to respond to the prompt. Then we worked together to come up with a topic sentence and a closing sentence. And what we've been working on um, the past couple of days is outlining the order in which we want to introduce that text evidence, the transitional phrases we're going to use, and then transferring that into an actual paragraph. So what I've been doing is this part was all done together. Like this was not the competition part of it. But when it comes to writing the sentences, because the thing is they have to learn how to take these notes and turn them into actual sentences that you would put in a paragraph. And so I did this in third and I think it was just something I came with, came up with on the spot. Like I was like, oh, maybe I'll just make these worth table points and that might get them more engaged. And it really worked well. And it's working really well at the eighth grade level because a lot of kids just don't like to write. They find it intimidating. And so then they just like get paralyzed or something. And so what I do is I take it one transitional phrase and set up text evidence at a time. I tell them that you guys are going to work as a group to take the transitional phrase that we chose as a class and the text evidence that we chose as a class and then convert that into a clear and coherent sentence or two. So they're actively working together. One person is delegated as the person that's recording the sentence they come up with. And then, um, then the sentence that we choose as a class gets table points. It just varies. Like sometimes I say 50 table points. Sometimes I say 25, like it doesn't really matter. Um, and so I give them about four minutes 
usually they need more than that so I would say they need somewhere between five to ten minutes to do this together they write um, their person four writes it down and then each table group will stand up and share hold on one second So I think what I was saying is once every group has had time to write their sentence, then another person is like the spokesperson. They stand up, they read the sentence, we all listen. If I hear the sentence and I want to give it some kind of feedback or some kind of constructive criticism, I'll do that. I let them know that I might do that. And I like doing that because it lets everybody else kind of hear what I'm hearing or kind of think through or kind of learn like, oh, like that sentence was wordy. I understand what she means now when she says a sentence was wordy or that transitional phrase doesn't really make sense with what you're saying. So we do that and then I narrow it down to like the top two or three and then as a class they vote which one they like the best out of the top two or three and whoever they choose is the sentence we're going to use and then they that table group gets whatever the point value is and so it, it really does work um which what's interesting is yesterday my kids are like are these responses supposed to be this long like they really get shook up when a paragraph exceeds like five sentences so i had to tell them like guys like i hate to break this to you but you guys are about to be high school students and this is the expectation like if you're writing a five sentence paragraph to respond to a question like this something is uh something's amiss something's wrong so i'm just telling them like this is this is it like this is what we need to do especially if you not only are going to high school but then you plan to go to college as well like you even if you don't like this you got to like suck it up and accept that this is a part of what you're going to have to do in your education so that's what we've been working on literally all week um, and it's one of those things that takes time but I truly think it's valuable and worth it because kids I don't think are being instructed on how to write um, just in general and then we get frustrated as teachers when their writing is not that great <laughs> but we're not maybe doing what we should be doing so that has been what's going on I'm gonna stop talking now because my leadership class is coming in a few minutes um, but yeah I might try and check it at lunch so that you guys can see Taylor's Nike day interpretation and so that I can do this outfit justice because it is super comfortable I know I said that before but it just is and I've gotten many compliments already from kids and adults so one of my best purchases yet. So I'll talk to you guys later. It's 3.23. I am packing up, cleaning up to really go home and let Riley out and then head out to my manicure. It's Friday, thank goodness. I love Friday afternoons. Hold on. There's just like a sense of freedom about it all. Um, as far as the day went, it went exactly as planned. We did exactly what I thought we would do in all my classes. My leadership class, um, we were supposed to do one thing, but we ended up just sharing our All About Me boards. I would show them to you. But it has student information on it, but they were like, I thought the kids would be bored just hearing everybody present their All About Me boards, but I was wrong. I was just gonna do five a day and then like spend the rest of the time planning for a potential rally that we might be able to have. But after the first five, it went by so fast, I was entertained and they were like, let's keep doing it. So we did that. Um, darn it. I was supposed to send this email. Do I feel like turning the computer back on? I guess I will. Um, and then in my homeroom class, we finished up the draft, our paragraph, responding to that first read question, gave them the whole speech again, like this is what the expectation is. Now that we've walked through this very meticulously together, you should know that this is what I'm expecting you to do, or this is what you should expect to do if you're looking to get a a or a B on these assignments and then in my switch class we did the same thing but they're just slightly behind so they're almost done but not quite done drafting it um, so that's what we did there um, during my universal access time right now we finished up or I finished up meeting with groups of students to go over their I ready results talking about goals establishing a specific goal establishing a plan of action on how they're going to achieve that goal and as tedious as that could be sometimes I really do feel like it is Bye. 
it is definitely valuable because you get to kind of hear their thought process as to what happened during that test or what they think their strength is or what they think their weakness is. Um, and you also just kind of get to know them a little bit more because you're in a smaller setting. So we finished that, which means next week I should actually be able to do some actual small group lessons with the groups. Um, and then that was it. Because my homeroom class is a little bit ahead, we did get to listen to some more of all your twisted secrets um, and continue to talk about that. They are still enjoying it. The last chapter I read with the homeroom class was a nice quick little impromptu discussion because one of the characters in this book, Sasha, is a character that you really are not supposed to like, like from the get go. Like she's supposed to get on your nerves um, because she's written that way. But then the chapter that we read, you kind of get a glimpse into her home life. And so after we listened to that chapter, I asked the kids, why do you think the author included this particular chapter? Like, what was the purpose? What was the function of this chapter in relationship to Sasha? And they immediately knew, like, it's so that we can kind of understand why she is the way that she is. So that we can maybe have a little bit of sympathy for this character we don't really like. Because her mom is extremely strict and always comparing her to her sister. Um, and so that was nice. And then we listened to a piece of another chapter and then we stopped. So that's it as far as everything else. If you're a middle school teacher, we've been also here dealing with the devilish lick challenge where kids are stealing parts of the bathroom and or damaging them. Um, we've had to do some investigations there. So if you teach a middle, if you teach middle school or high school, uh, possibly even, no, I don't think, let's hope they're not doing this at college. It's like a TikTok challenge and the kids are like stealing soap dispensers, pieces of toilet seats, um, damaging toilets, flooding urinals, like, and so when I talk to my class about this, I'm like, guys, it's the toilet. Like, let's just think of the sanity, or not the sanity, the sanitary factor or lack thereof of that situation. So we talked about that. Hopefully that comes to an end. At this point right now, we only have one bathroom open on campus because the principal said we can't trust you guys in all the bathrooms. So we have to have this one bathroom open that can be monitored. And so it's rough. One of my kids tried to go to the bathroom today and she came back and said she couldn't go because there was like a line of 30 sixth graders trying to go to the bathroom waiting to be monitored. And I said, that's the consequence. <laughs> so hopefully that's put behind us and the other bathrooms can open, but I was like, guys, come on. Like, we know middle schoolers are gonna do things, but I'm like, really, the toilet, the bathroom, what are you gonna do with a, a toilet seat? Like, literally the seat of the toilet. I don't know. So, on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and end the vlog here because I'm gonna be heading out. If you enjoyed today's vlog, please give this a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, and if you're not, following me on Instagram, head over there and follow me at Smarty Style. And as always, I hope that you guys are well. And if you're not well, please be well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Happy Friday!